What's up YouTube? So welcome to day three of the 30 day kickstart. So today is a pull day. We're doing back biceps and actually a little bit of triceps too because yesterday for our push day we didn't have much triceps involved. So it's just for this week that I kind of uh, made it a little funky. So we're gonna hit some triceps today. Then next week push is gonna be chest, shoulders, tries pull is going to be just back and buys for the rest of the program. My apologies for that, but we are hitting some triceps today. Had a great workout today with Jojo, so if you haven't followed her already on Instagram or on YouTube, she's a great channel to follow, great informative content. So introduce yourself. What's up guys, so I just got done doing a pull day workout with Marissa here at District Barbell. Really awesome facility if you're ever in the DMV area. It is the Ape Athletics Ever Forward. Um, hosted gym here in Fairfax, Virginia. So I am really feeling it in my arms today. Marissa put me through a really killer workout. A little bit about me. So I also do um, a lot of fitness content, but also lifestyle content on my YouTube channel. You can find that probably in the description down below. I think Marissa will probably link that down there. So go ahead and give me a follow if you're interested in seeing any of my content. I provide a lot of information regarding uh, bulking with body confidence, a lot of um, kind of like self appreciative content in regards to fitness and having it be more of fitness and loving yourself along the way. So she will have that information down below and I will see you guys later. Yeah, so I'm gonna do a voiceover for this entire workout, kind of different than what I've been doing for this trainer so far, but because the gym plays a lot of copyrighted music, I'm just gonna be talking over the workout. So enjoy the workout and I'll see you guys right after. All right, what's up guys? So we are doing this voiceover here. I'm gonna do my best to talk you through the workout. I know you guys have it printed, so you should be able to follow along just fine. So first off, we're doing wide grip lat pull downs, three sets of 10. You can see that I'm using what's called a mag grip, and this is a new style of attachment, and I actually love them so much. They're just like ergonomically made to help contract the muscle that you're trying to target better, so in this case your lats. So keys for form on the wide grip lat pull down. Notice how my torso is staying very stable. I am not swinging my body. I'm coming up feeling almost a completely full stretch in my lats, then retracting my shoulders and then pulling down by leading with the elbows. And I touch my upper chest at the top of the movement. So these are all very key in getting your lat pull downs correct. You want to feel this movement and basically every back movement that we're doing today in the crevice and area behind your armpit. So right above my sports bra on my back where you can see it's stretching out and it's very wide and muscular. Those are my lats and that is what you should be targeting and feeling this exercise in. So we're doing a wide grip lat pull down with the bag grip, which kind of puts us in a neutral grip position. But if you're using a normal bar, make sure you have an overhand grip, which just means that your palms are facing forward away from your face with the bar and you want to grab it a little bit outside the bend on the bar. Here I'm showing you how I logged it in my sheet. So I did three sets, all of 10, 70 pounds, 85 and 85. Next up was a superset of a seated cable row and a bent over barbell row. 10 reps for both of these. So here you can see with the seated cable row, my feet are up on the platforms. I am leaning with my elbow, retracting my shoulders before I start pulling, um, leaning forward just a little bit at the front of every single rep to stretch out my lats. Again, the same area right behind your armpit above your sports bra. If you're a guy um, in that area, but not with your sports bra, and I'm leading with the elbows and trying to get them behind me. Same thing goes for this bent over barbell row, getting my elbows up and behind me, keeping my elbows tucked as close to my sides as I possibly can. So you can't see that so well with this angle, but you can see here how my elbows are basically right by my torso. They're not flaring outwards at all. So you want to do this for both the seated row and the bent over barbell row. Keep your elbows tight to your body. 
And you can see with this seated row, I'm actually uh, letting my shoulders protract, which means uh, roll forward and then I retract them and then I pull in that seated row. So I was doing that to just overemphasize the retraction of my shoulders and my back. And then again with this barbell row, you can use a preloaded barbell. This gym just didn't have preloaded barbells, so we loaded up this little preacher curl bar. So the bar basically weighed nothing, and then we put 20 pa 25 pounds on each side. So it was probably around 55 to 60 pounds for this barbell row. So 10 reps and keeping the elbows tight and getting my elbows up behind me to squeeze my back at the top of every single rep. Here you can see I used 85 pounds on the row and 50 plus the bar because we don't know how much the bar actually weighed for the exercise, but just writing in what you did and how many reps you got to keep yourself accountable for the next time you hit a pull day. Next up we did cable lat pullovers superset with tricep push downs. So like I said, this workout is unique in the program. We actually start with more of a back and arm day instead of a pull day. And yesterday was more so just chest and shoulders. The rest of the program is going to stay strictly push pull with chest, shoulders, triceps on push day and back and biceps on pull day. But I made this one a little funky, like I said. But tricep push downs, keys with this, you want to bring your wrists up so that your forearm is at a 90 degree angle with the, your upper arm so that you feel the full stretch in your tricep and then you push down and squeeze your tricep at the bottom. Uh, notice how my chest is out. I'm leaning forward a little bit, but I'm not hunching over and using my body weight to push the weight. I'm actually keeping my upper body completely still and just using my forearms to push down the tricep extension. And then this is the cable lat pullover. This one's a little bit trickier, but essentially I'm leaning forward, letting the cable come up and stretch out my lats, the area behind my armpit, and I'm using my shoulder joint. So my arm is basically just one big piece that's moving this bar, and I'm pulling my elbows back behind me. So I'm thinking more so about getting my elbows back and less so about where my wrists are going. So that's kind of the difference between this cable lat pullover and the tricep push down. I see a lot of people make a cable lat pullover, basically a combination of this tricep push down and the pullover, and it looks like something oddly in between. So you can see the stark difference between these two exercises, which I think helps make that contrast and show you guys what it should be looking like for each exercise. So again, keeping my chest out, I'm not using momentum to push the weight down, but I'm contracting my triceps at the bottom of every rep. Next up, we have seated cable face pulls or cable rope face pulls or whatever they're called. I'm doing these seated because I feel like I get more stability by sitting on the floor. And I also feel it more in my rear delts because I'm able to pull a little bit towards my face. Keys with this, you want to think about spreading the rope apart, not only pulling your elbows back, but bringing the rope as far apart and out by your ears as you can. Then we superset that with dumbbell bent over rear delt flies. So with this, you want to get into like a bent over row sort of position. Your back is flat, your knees are slightly bent, and you're keeping everything tight in your upper body then you're basically just pretending like you're doing a rear delt fly on the pec deck, but instead you're holding dumbbells. So if you're curious about a rear delt pec deck, then you want to go to yesterday's video, push day, and refer to that. It should feel exactly the same, except you're just bent over and working against gravity. So I like to compare those two to make it easier to understand the path of motion that your arms should be going through with that exercise. So again, with this face pull, it's not a lat pull down. You wanna keep your elbows high, you wanna keep your elbows up by your ears. And so you're leading with your elbows, bringing them back up to your ears with every single rep and making sure that you're pulling the rope apart as well. And then the only other thing that I can say about these dumbbell bent over rear delt flies is that you don't wanna use a lot of momentum and you want to think about not only bringing your elbows up, but you want to think about bringing your elbows out. So this is what differentiates the fly from a dumbbell row. 
you're pulling your elbows as far away from your body as possible as well as bringing them up behind you and with these flies you want to feel it in the little tiny crevice right up where your armpit is um, and up to your shoulder on the back side of your shoulder and so with this you see we do a drop set on the last set so the program does note that we do a drop set on the final set of these rear delt flies so I drop from 10 pounds to 5 pounds and just push till failure on this last drop set here. Next up we did standing alternating dumbbell curls for biceps. With the dumbbell bicep curl the keys for this is you want to keep your upper body tight, you want to keep your chest out, shoulders back, posture in check and then you're not moving your upper arm at all, you're just moving your forearm to pull the weight up and when you're at the top of one rep you want to keep the other arm just still and let it hang. Finish one full rep with one arm before starting pulling up with the other arm. It can actually take away from your power if you're starting one arm while the other one's coming down so just take your time and do each arm separately. We did these bicep curls superset with exercise ball tricep bench dips so I actually put an exercise ball out where my feet were and then suspended myself between the bench and the ball and did tricep dips seated that way because I tried them with my feet just on the floor and it was a little bit too easy. I was doing like 20 or so reps per set. So if you are a beginner, then try doing seated dips with just your feet on the floor. Just cross your feet and let your heels touch the floor and do bench dips this way. But if you are more advanced and you feel that you can add in some stability with this with the exercise ball, then this is a great option. It was actually so fun to try and challenged my core stability a lot because I had to keep my core tight to prevent my legs from kind of swinging side to side or from falling off the ball. And so just make sure you're going very slow and controlled with these. Um, set up nice and slowly so that you know that you're in a safe starting position. And then when you're done, just sit back on the bench behind you instead of like sitting on the floor or falling off or something like that. Next up we finished off the workout with bent over dumbbell rows, single arm dumbbell rows. So keys with this, you want to make sure your knees are slightly bent, you're holding on to something to support your upper body, keep your back straight and arched back, keep your shoulders retracted, and come down and let your lat stretch and then pull up and bring your elbow up behind you and you want to squeeze that area behind your armpit just like we've been doing with the pull downs and the rows same thing goes here so we did 15 reps per arm what I like to do is I like to keep some tension on my lat so I don't go all the way down on my rows and then I pull up from a point of greater tension but not of losing tension at the bottom so that's the voiceover. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any questions about this workout, then please let me know. I'm not planning on doing too many voiceovers for the 30 day kickstart just because I want to be talking in the gym with you guys about the lifts. But for today, this is what we're working with. So thank you guys for watching and have a great workout today and tomorrow. And for the rest of these 30 days, we're off to a strong start and I'm so excited for every single one of you. And here's just a screenshot of my log that I'm writing on and what it looks like when I finish the workout. That was the back workout guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are killing it on this kickstart so far and please just comment below or email me if you have any questions moving forward into the 30 days. Remember that I'm always a resource for you to use so don't be afraid to just reach out and ask questions. I'm happy to help. So I'll see you for day four for shoulders and abs in two days. So make sure you don't miss that video and stay on track with the trainer and I'll talk to you guys then. Bye. So here's some foam rolling you can do and stretching to ease the pain and recover faster. So the first thing, you wanna make sure you're walking around a lot, you're not sitting all day long after your leg days. Best thing you can do is get up and get the blood flowing. So I just did cardio and it feels really good to just like break up the lactic acid in my legs. And then another thing you can do is stay on top of your water intake, at least a gallon a day, guys. You should always be drinking at least a gallon a day, especially with this amount of exercise. 
so that water is going to help flush out the lactic acid. And then lastly, foam rolling and stretching on a regular basis. So here's what some stuff you can do.